The way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media. All is a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. From the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute, we're joined by Erica. Good morning. Good morning. You've, you've shrunk. <laughs> you I <can't>. did. <laughs> My microphone was a little bit too low, so I adjusted myself. Good How morning. are you? I'm doing just fine. It's yeah. a Friday. Everything is well. Yeah. Adam mentioned it. It's very festive here in the yeah. studio. Yeah. In case you didn't get the memo, it's December, folks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump into some of these buzzwords that are of conversation, several of them. Uh, first and foremost, the big question has been looming. Is China finally shifting from that zero COVID policy? I mean, we've seen a week of massive protests, yep. and it's clearly prompting some sort of response. So let's take a look at this white paper protest. Let's do that. Um, Chinese residents uh, here in Seoul held a rally mm. on Wednesday night. Uh, it was an unprecedented gathering. Uh, and uh, they were protesting against the stringent mm. COVID-19 measures back home in their country. Mm. And their message was simple. Okay. Give us freedom. Respect our human rights. Right. Uh, the protesters had their faces covered uh, for fear of being persecuted. Mm. Now, around 100 protesters gathered, and many of them were students studying here. And uh, they gathered in a street near Hongik University, mm. which is a popular area uh, where young people gather to mm. hang out. Mm. And uh, these people paid their respects to the victims of a fire uh, in the capital of Xinjiang province, which killed 10 people. The young protesters blamed China's prolonged and extreme lockdown measures, which they say Mm. delayed firefighters, uh, which ultimately led to the deaths of the victims. So from what I've seen on news reports and the pictures, the protesters are holding up signs reading Free China and Dictator Mm -hmm. out, clearly pointing to Xi, uh, as well as this blank white pieces of paper, which has become this now globally recognizable symbol of defiance against Beijing's censorship. That's right. Um, These protests uh, have been taking place in China, as we've all seen in the news, and in other parts of the world as well. Uh, And that now includes... Seoul. Uh, The protests are considered to be the boldest display of dissent against the Chinese authorities since the Tiananmen Square demonstrations in 1989. Mm. And the Seoul gathering was unsurprisingly organized through social media. Mm. Uh, People were heard vocally condemning the Chinese government's strict virus restrictions. Now, for nearly three years, China's zero COVID strategy Mm. has severely limited people's freedom um, to move, Mm. and it's cost the country, its economy. Absolutely. Factories are shut down. That's just one small example with big effects globally. Um, But people couldn't go to work. Um, They had schedules for grocery shopping and things like that. People couldn't eat. Really. Having food on the table literally was a question of survival for these people at one point. Interestingly enough, just three years ago in the same Hongik University area, that neighborhood, Chinese students made headlines for the polar opposite reason. That's right. At the time, there was a counter rally uh, against those criticizing Ah. Beijing's attempt to suppress the democracy of Hong Kong. Now, all of this suggests the severe depth of the frustrations and anger Mm. felt by many Chinese, especially among the younger generation, Mm. uh, the protests, like I said before, were organized by undergraduate students in their early 20s. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, they're the generation after the nation's reform and Mm -hmm. open door policy, which brought economic prosperity to the country. They grew up with more individual rights and freedoms. Mm -hmm. So it's only natural. They're Mm -hmm. going to react more sensitively if they feel their interests are being violated by the government's policies. These basic human rights, my right to move around Uh and the freedom to choose where I go. Some experts Experts say the protests will likely lead to the relaxation of some COVID measures, Mm -hmm. but and we're seeing some headlines. Um, Some people are returned to work, uh, particularly in Guangzhou. Uh, Some lockdowns are 
lifted yes. in a limited region. Beijing a senior health official played down the severity of Omicron variants. Mm-hmm. That's unprecedented. Yeah, so exactly. Some changes. Yeah, so restrictions in major cities, you mentioned Guangzhou, yeah. were abruptly lifted on Wednesday, just hours mm-hmm. after the city saw some violent protests uh, resulted mm-hmm. in clashes between the police and protesters. Now, according to a Reuters report, a community in the capital, Beijing, also allowed COVID cases with mild symptoms to isolate at home, which mm. is really a far cry from earlier protocols, uh, which saw entire buildings, communities locked down, sometimes as a result of just one positive case. Can you imagine? I mean, we did have a moment when it, we, we just saw one case at a yep. department store and the entire building was shut down, mm-hmm. but it was very short-lived, um, not prolonged for months and months. Yes. Okay. Um, other major cities like Shanghai and uh-huh. Chongqing also saw some roles relaxed. So even the central government of China understands that this backlash is monumental now that they do have to respond. I think so. Okay, there you have it. Let's move on to our second buzzword of the day. It's kind of frustrating to have this conversation. <laughs> We're nearing 2023, yeah. but uh, maybe it's it's a point that we have to make mm-hmm. because we still <laughs> haven't made enough progress in reaching equality at yeah. the top offices of the world. Yeah. Leaders of New Zealand and Finland hit back a reporter's question on really age and gender yeah. specifics are a question. That's right. Um, these two are two of the youngest heads of government yeah. among a very small percentage of female world leaders. Mm. And precisely because of who they are, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and Finnish Prime Minister Asana Marin mm. have long faced questions about their age and gender. And there was a news conference in New Zealand mm-hmm. on Wednesday, and the two leaders were asked by a certain journalist the reason for their meeting. And uh, I would like to quote the journalist because, okay. you know, because, quote, a lot of people will be wondering whether you two are meeting just because you're similar in age and, you know, got a lot of common stuff there. Okay, first of all, uh, choose your words wisely, my friend. Got a lot of common stuff there, doesn't do anything. Maybe this journalist was questioning his or her own intentions, Mm -hmm. too. Uh, Got a lot of common stuff, really. Okay, (laughs) Um, Arden, uh, the New Zealand's prime minister, was Mm -hmm. really, as she always is. down. Yeah. The question, now she said... I wonder whether or not anyone ever asked Barack Obama and John Key if they met because they were of similar age. And she went on to say that although there is a higher proportion of men in politics today, the reason two women meet is not simply because of their gender. Or age. Thank you for that. (laughs) (laughs) And she was so poised, too. She didn't sound angry. No. And uh, Marin, who is currently in New Zealand Mm -hmm. uh, with a Finnish trade delegation, Mm -hmm. emphasized the country's growing trade ties. Mm. And uh, her response was even simpler. She said, we're meeting because we are prime ministers. <laughs> and that was that. Uh, is mic drop still relevant or is that a really data reference too? But I, I mean, come on, be better with your questions. You know, this will go down in legacy as one of the worst faux pas. Do you think the journalist felt a little bit embarrassed after I, I think shot down? If yes, then yeah. maybe there's progress there too, mm. right? I mean, feeling embarrassed is the first step to yeah. doing better. All right. On to our third story today. Uh, North Korea is, yes, a hermit kingdom, and we get stories and updates and drips and drabs, and Mm -hmm. it's a lot of times formed by what their central news agency wants us to believe. Many of the times, it's propaganda. Exactly. However, you'd be surprised to find that they also have regular life, Mm -hmm. and they have pop culture just like us, and fashion leaders to look out for. But this is just kind of an unlikely (laughs) young leader. You know, I listened to um, the the, the key the headline yeah. a corner uh, before I walk into the studio every morning and uh, you guys have talked plenty of times about uh, Kim Jong-un yeah. and uh, his daughter you know it's they've made headlines around the world in recent weeks because uh, for a very prolonged time yeah. we thought another girl might possibly be yeah. uh, his daughter well right? he has three kids right yeah. um, anyways many questions were asked including whether um, this was Kim's way of announcing yeah. to the world that mm-hmm. Chue would one day become the heir yep. to the regime. Anyways, most recently she has created ripples in her native North Korea for her style. 
and fashion. <laughs> um, so when when she first appeared in public, uh, you know, she let her bangs down. She mm. wore this white uh, down jacket. Yeah. The next time she appeared, she wore a black coat with a fur trimmed collar. And uh, you know, since then, the Rodong Shinmun mm. newspaper uh, have been publishing photos mm. of North Korean women in white and pink padded jackets, <laughs> similar to the one worn. By Kim's daughter, and many are saying, you know, she's walking in the footsteps of her mother. Mm. Do you remember the mm. first time she made her official appearance with Kim Jong Un? This was back in what 2012. Oh, it, a decade it ago. It felt more, much more modern. I mean, yep. we talked about, I know this feels so archaic, but hemlines when Kim Jong-un came into power. Yep. And you sort of kind of represented sort of the modern next chapter for North Korea, maybe. Exactly. You know, she was seen wearing these uh, decidedly more modern Western yeah. style dresses. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, you know, at the time, she sort of infused this new wave of mm. change. Mm. She was photographed in these dresses and clothes, including shorter skirts and high heels. And mm. she was also photographs, uh, photographed carrying low luxury bags mm. from brands like Christian Dior. And this is in a country where dress codes are stiffly enforced. Right. Um, so anyways, the newspaper recently highlighted the importance of dressing beautifully and diversely, according to the season. Diversely? I don't know what that means. Really? In North Korea? Yeah. I, okay, I'll, I'll take their word for it. But again, a lot of times they do have a motive as to why these mm-hmm. stories are sensationalized or talked about more yep. frequently. So take it with a grain of salt. However, in North Korea, life also carries on surprisingly yes. normal. And there was this one photograph that I saw uh, in one of the newspapers, I, I forget, but uh, people, women walking on the street mm. and they're all wearing the similar looking outfits, similar looking outfit, the padded uh, oh, jackets. We're streaming the images. You're oh, right. Oh, that's the image that I Did saw. They shop at the same department store. Very they have colorful it, it, too. Right, right, yeah. right. So when a fashion trend is picked up, mm. apparently it's picked up by all the wealthy folks. Yes, in North Korea. it seems like a ten-year-old is. <laughs> Leading the way. It's an unlikely fashion yep, leader, yep. isn't it? I hear that mega malls are also quite popular in North Korea, mm-hmm. too. That's a new thing. Yep. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Erica. Have a wonderful weekend. Pleasure. We'll, we'll see you next week. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.